Hello everyone. Good evening. I am Purnima from Fertility Dose. And today we are going to talk about very interesting of topic that is all about embryo. It doesn't mean that we'll talk about embryo. We'll discuss all other aspects accordingly, whether it will be concerning IVF, IUI or any other reproductive methods you are interested in asking queries. Today we have Dr. Noshin with us. She is a senior consultant in reproductive medicine, craft, hospital and research center, Kerala. So I welcome you Dr. Noshin on the platform of Fertility Dose. So Dr. Noshin. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Could you please tell us a little about yourself, your journey towards this position? Oh. Okay, so, so I um, okay I work as a senior consultant in reproductive medicine in Craft Hospital and Research Center. Uh, the center was started around 20, 25 years back by, by my father, uh, Dr. Mohammad Ashraf, and it was his dream and passion to start a center specialized for infertility. And I graduated from uh, Rajiv Gandhi Medical University and was graduated from Dr. M. J. R. Medical University. And after that, I did fellowship from fellowship in reproductive medicine, and I've got a Royal College degree, uh, MRCOG, and also uh, I've, I've graduated from Ireland. And currently, I'm working in craft. I'm really excited to be here uh, because I got to know that this is one of the biggest support group for women having fertility issues and uh, and and to be a part of the platform where people get to ask questions is really exciting thank you so much and seriously such uh, motivation from uh, such expert means a lot to us so uh, let's start the session dr noshin and uh, let me yes, ask sure. you one simple thing how important is day three embryo or blastocyst like let's start with differentiating these two day three and blastocyst according to you which okay. stage is more important okay so there is always a controversy whether to transfer a day three embryo or a day five embryo so I'm uh, so obviously all the recent literature are in favor of day five embryo. The reason being that is the final stage at which after which the embryo is going to implant. So and it has got the maximum implantation potential. But what practically we have to understand if, if it's a woman who have got very less embryo, suppose on day three, she has only one embryo or two embryo, which are not that of great quality, then there is no point in culturing her to day five embryo the simple reason because you know mean because one of the uh, disadvantage of day five blastocyst transfer is that many women lose to have a, a embryo to have um, lo lo will lose an embryo to have a transfer so to avoid that rather than culturing to day five if the number of embryo is less and is of less good quality uh, then it is better to transfer day three if you have many embryo or if you're a woman who had multiple IVF failures, then to avoid a further mishap, you can culture till day five and transfer. So I'm, I'm not very sure whether the audience well aware of what is a day three embryo, what is a day five embryo. Uh, so what, what uh, actually happens is uh, when we do, uh, I, I hope everyone is aware of what is IVF, right? Do you want me to explain right. that? No. Okay, so either after uh, 17 hours of IVF or uh, 18 hours uh, or 17 to 18 hours of IVF or ICSI, uh, we do a pronuclear check, which is basically a fusion of an egg and a fusion of a sperm, which is called pronuclear formation. And after that, one day later, which uh, which th that that comes a second checkpoint where we expect the embryo to be of two cell. Okay, and then if, if we see a two cell, we consider it fine. And then one day later, that is day two, we expect it to be double, that is four cell. And on day three, we, that is what you are asking, we expect it to be eight cell. 
okay and then on day 4 onwards there is a compaction of this multiple cells happen forming morula and on day 5 it is uh, the, the there is formation of fluid inside the cavity of the embryo and is and is called as blastocyst that is the day 5 blastocyst right okay and this day 5 is considered final stage at which the embryo Uh, usually in by nature in nature also the embryo enters at uh, uterine cavity at this stage and is ready to implant if the situation in the uterus are ideal okay so ideal situation means uh, 7 to 11 mm of endometrial thickness well uh, i hope it is as simple as uh, just the thickness wise but then honestly speaking it is not very simple so there are a lot of factors which determines whether the lining is good so it is not just the thickness yeah thickness wise any endometrium more than 7 or 8 mm to 11 mm is considered ideal but then apart from the lining we have to look at to the uh, thickness or apart from the thickness we also need to look at the uh, um, uh, how the pattern is uh whether there is any fluid inside the cavity whether how is the appearance of the endometrium how is the color flow of the endometrium and um compaction uh, that's a technical term how much you know well compaction uh, how much the lining undergoes changes after when we start the progesterone supplementation so all these things plays a very important role and most most importantly it is the receptivity which determines whether the embryo will implant or not so uh, in simple terms if we explain suppose where if the if we are offering a good quality embryo and uh, the uterus is not not receptive so what happens that it undergoes ivf failure suppose we are transferring a moderate uh, an embryo and the uterus is actually very receptive what happens the embryo implants but then later undergoes miscarriage so a fine balance between a good embryo and a good receptive uterus is very important for a successful pregnancy right right So, uh, Dr. Nasheen, uh, we are getting. Uh, uh, Miss Purnima, I just, I just wanted to ask one thing. Uh, sorry, mm-hmm. is there any lag in between? Because uh, are you able to hear me very well? Uh, I think now it's uh, quite uh, clear. Otherwise, uh, your voice is breaking in between, and there's some network issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's fine now. So we'll be taking uh, start taking queries. Okay. So let's have one. So we have this one. I'm 32 years old. My one tube is removed due to ectopic pregnancy. Can I get pregnant again? Okay. Sure, dear. You have a chance for uh, getting pregnant again. Uh, but then there are certain factors which we need to check before planning for another pregnancy. That is, you said that one tube is removed. What about the other tube? is it still open so uh, if the other tube is still open you have a very good chance for getting natural pre- naturally pregnant again if there is egg development happening on the other side similarly uh, you need to uh, you said that you are 32 years old but i'm um, um, i'm not sure of your ovarian reserve how many follicles are there how is the husband semen parameter what about your hormonal evaluation uh, what about the you know uterine cavity the lining all these factors play a very important role uh, in determining whether you can get pregnant naturally and also determines the time to pregnancy purnima my technical person is there do you want help from him do you want me to alter it no ma'am it's fine uh, it's fine okay hmm. Uh, so yes, uh, as uh, Dr. Nosheen said, there is possibility for you to get pregnant again. But for uh, to tell you exactly what are the issues and uh, how we can treat this, we really need to know your other parameters. And if you want to consult Dr. Nosheen, please let us know. You can mail us or just message over here, and we'll get you connected with her. so uh, let's take next one i have transferred frozen day 3 sex cell a and b embryo last week as no blastocyst was formed will it be success okay thank you so much for the query 
uh, well, what I would like to say at this point, when you have already undergone a transfer, is, is to be very, very full and optimistic. Uh, we are no one to decide whether this embryo is going to implant or not. Many times, what, what we what we say out may not come out to be true because that's a that is but nature plays a very important role. Since you have undergone embryo transfer, I would like to suggest you to uh, do some um, stress relief exercises like meditation and yoga. Uh, Ma'am, your voice and is follow your rigorous. Sorry, just a second. Uh, Dilchit? Dilchit? Is it better now? Yeah, actually in between the voice is breaking. Otherwise, I think uh, there's some uh, time lag between the voice okay. and... Uh, hmm. uh, actually, I checked the network. It is, it is quite good here. I don't know why it's happening. Um, were you able to hear my question well? I mean, I hear my answer well. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Now it's fine. Uh, you can continue, ma'am. Uh, okay. So as I was mentioning, do some relaxation exercises like yoga, meditation. Talk to your near ones at this stage where you have undergone transfer, and to be very hopeful. So uh, I would like to say an example. Uh, so you might have seen how this uh, trapeze, the circus trapeze, uh, circus. Uh, people do the trapeze at all, right? So how much ever you practice, if you're not confident that, you know, you are, you will be, you will be reaching the next place, uh, how much ever you try, you will fall. So you have to be confident. You have to be optimistic. Please don't lose hope. Follow what your doctors have said and then wait for the result. And I hope you get pregnant. Right. And uh, we'll just uh, send you a message, Dr. Noshin, when we get her positive reports with us. I'm also hopeful for that. <laughs> right. So we have uh, next. My friend recently had two IVF failures and is planning next IVF in January. Should she take any precautions before next IVF? Okay. Uh, thank you so much for putting out your question. Uh, I'm really sorry that you had two IVF failures. But then uh, I would like to say that please don't lose hope. Uh, because there is, so when you had two IVF failure, that gives a very, very good uh, elaborate history to understand and go back and find out why exactly it happened. So when, when you transfer uh, an embryo and if it fails, uh, just there are certain checkpoints that we need to look into, you know, into, into notes. So, for example, whether the quality of the embryo which was transferred. So, if it's not a good quality embryo, definitely it will not implant. And then also need to look into your uterine factor, how the lining was, whether you had any abnormality in the uterus or whether any scar tissue, how, how the lining developed and how, how the lining was when the embryo was transferred. And also whether there was any infection in the tube, infection in the uterus, or uh, and similarly whether you had any hormonal issue in case if you had, whether it was well corrected, whether you had any immunity problems, like because sometimes when you have autoantibodies, it's a technical term, where there are some proteins developed inside the body which act against the pregnancy and the self. So if, if at all that antibodies are present that can also affect the pregnancy even if you transfer a good quality embryo or similarly how your egg reserves uh, or how the sperm was and uh, also like you know how the transfer actually went whether it was a smooth transfer difficult transfer and also sometimes uh, when you trans when you had two IVF failure I, I understand that you had two embryo transfers also so when you have a failure with two embryo transfers whether sometimes a couple might be absolutely normal, but out of 100, two, four people have a condition uh, called as genetical variations, where there is in, whether there's a genetic variation in the karyotype, which could lead to uh, implantation failure. So that evaluation also is required. And most, most importantly, uh, the lab parameter, like for example, so many times we see only what 
uh, we see the doctor we see the hospital then then we go out but the real work actually happens inside the lab so uh, for the success of an i of an ivf pregnancy the a good quality uh, well advanced and equipped lab is very important so also look into the what is the pregnancy rate generally in the hospital so all these factors need to be looked into before you jump into your next ivf and uh, also you need to be evaluated and pre medications are also required so don't worry uh, just prepare your body and i would suggest that stay calm that is most important thing when you are going for IVF. absolutely next we have does blastocysts transfer increase chances of pregnancy yes if you if you look into the layman term blastocysts transfer improves the pregnancy rate uh, it's almost the literature says that the pregnancy rate is almost double but then if the blastocyst is not of good quality then the chance of pregnancy comes down so again a lot of parameters are there and similarly as i was explaining not just the embryo the uterus the other factors the hormones all those factors come into play to determine whether the pregnancy will be happening but it the, the term technically ingri has got an increased chance right so uh, blastocyst means increased chances of pregnancy we can say that yes a good blastocyst right uh, next we have i have t shaped uterus can i conceive without any procedure well a uh, t shaped uterus is generally lesser seen nowadays when compared to the older time uh, having said that a uh, t shaped uterus the pregnancy chance is also very good uh, and um, there is a small risk of preterm labor and miscarriage but i don't want you to lose hope uh, more important than just the uterine part get thorough, get a thorough evaluation of the other parameters as i was mentioning whether the your ovarian reserve the uh, your hormones your husband semen parameter but if you just look into the t if all other parameters are normal t shaped uterus alone should not be an issue right the age uh, she mentioned is i am 29 years old so i think sh oh. she should try for natural conception and there no need for uh, worry about the t shape uterus so so age wise 29 is a good age young age uh, but how long she's been trying is also a very important factor and sometimes you see 29 year old women with, uh, with low ovarian reserve i'm not trying to be uh, pessimist in this case i just want to be aware of the broader aspect and probably if she's worried and if she's been trying for some time it is better to get evaluated and to you know to in case of some other problem is it to get corrected and then try for pregnancy but there is good hope right so no need to worry about the shape of uterus we can say that yes let me take yes I have did my second IVF on ninth November after twelve days. Is it right date twentieth November for beta HSG test? Should I also do progesterone test on same day? Due to progesterone and heparin injection, my thighs and back got swelling. Applied ice, but still no recovery. Uh okay, so. um all the best flower gokul uh, okay. i hope you get pregnant uh, what i what i would like to say is usually beta hcg is done 11 to 13 days after the embryo transfer so that would be an ideal window time to do it and should i the second part of the question is should i also do progesterone test on the same day it's not required to do progesterone test on the day of beta hcg not at all due to third question due to progesterone and heparin injection my thighs and back got swelling applied ice but still no recovery so uh so uh, i i assume that i mean there are no further it is written that is her second ivf right right 
second ivf so if she is allergic to if she is allergic to heparin injections and progesterone injections i would i would suggest her to uh, if if it's not relieving with the ice packs it is better to stop it because the role of heparin and uh, progesterone injections are the evidence is very limited there is a small evidence supporting that adjuvant uh, benefit of these two injections but if if it is not suiting to you if it is really causing discomfort to you it is better to stop it and get maybe instead of, instead of progesterone injections you can add one more uh, different type of progesterone in case i i don't i'm not sure i don't have the further details if she's taking only one type of progesterone that can be supplemented with another different type of progesterone instead of the injections and regarding heparin uh before stopping it i since again the history is not completely known why why she is on heparin injection whether she has any antibodies or other any um, thrombosis history i'm not sure why exactly she is on heparin injection if it is just for the uh, second ivf concern then probably since it's not tolerate since she is not tolerating she can stop it or she can try it in different area if she is very very anxious about it different body part body part right so next we have doctor uh, i am 40 i have undergone ivf in feb september and november all had failed all were grade 1 embryos my et was 8 to 9 mm i had fever of 99 to 100 degrees in second third transfer what could be reason for failure what additional test i should do and how to avoid fever so uh she had fever on the second and third transfers both the time she had fever right. that's is that right okay right so uh some people are allergic to certain med preparations which uh, uh cause you know body reaction in the form of fever or the most common reason for a fever is a viral infection or any bacterial infection which could have triggered so again what kind of a fever she had whether it is a uh, infection induced like you know gen the respiratory tract infection induced fever or just a drug induced fever or sometimes especially when women after undergoing during embryo transfer they try to hold the urine for a long time and because of which later she develops some infection and because of that it is is it a uterine uh, i mean a urinary tract infection induced fever there are no much details about it so we need to look into what exactly triggered the fever after having that elaborate conversation then we can decide what next can what, how it can be prevented in the future again coming to the two ivf failures now since is the third attempt uh, as i was mentioning looking into that embryo part since you said that it was good quality embryo that the uterine evaluation hormonal all those parts has to be uh, factors need to be looked into i also need to point out that i understand that she's 40 years so uh, yeah. what usually happens is after 35 years the chance of um, uh, normally genetically normal embryo production also comes down okay, okay. so uh, because of which you know uh the good quality what she might be perceived is may not be actual or perceived by the uh, laboratory embryologist may not be the actual good quality they might may not be genetically normal so that could also be a potential reason for the failure so if she has sufficient good quality embryo i mean if she can if, if during the next ivf if there are good uh, sufficient number of good quality embryo then she, it it would be better if she undergoes pgda where we can select the best quality genetically normal embryo and transfer so that the time to pregnancy is reduced having said that if the number of good quality embryos are less don't worry about it go ahead with the transfer but make sure that the other parameters are well evaluated uh dr noshin uh, like and all the best we have met yeah uh, recently we had many queries regarding this uh, uti after embryo transfer so what could be the reason for this okay so uh, as i was mentioning one of the reason is that like hold trying to you know hold the urine for long time which might have triggered or sometimes most of the time uh, we usually supplement vaginal progesterone 
and uh, since it remains wet there is a chance for uh, microbial generation and uh, which can trigger a urinary tract infection so if at all so i always tell my patient if if a certain medication is not suiting you if you finding any alarm alarming symptom don't just keep it to yourself always talk to your doctor about it so that you know what best before it becomes negative we can try what be, what how it can be altered right right so i think the holding of urine is the major problem which is causing this uh, uti infection uh, well, well i wouldn't say it's a, it's a uh, it's a uh, most commonest reason the most commonest reason is see uh, first of all females are generally prone for urinary tract infections more than the men right the simple reason being the the urethra that is the uh, the organ for passing urine is very crossed cro uh, crossed to the uh, close to the anus okay so because right. of the proximity generally women are highly prone second reason is that we live in a humid area and uh, our women are not well educated so again due to the humid condition uh the sweat and all increases and then this again forms a breeding bread for the breeding area for the uh, microbial uh, invasion microbial invasion and growth uh and um all these other factors like the progesterone vaginal progesterone supplementation and other parameters just adds on to the risk and uh, this lady was using progesterone gel post transfer so could you be uh, think that this may be the reason for that infection for her urinary tract infection so how a right. urinary tract infection is diagnosed is by first of patient uh, will have burning uh, burn pass by passing burning. urine she might have burning symptoms then you have to, then you have to check the urine sample and uh, if it's affecting if the patient is symptomatic then you can either you can even do a urine culture which shows what kind of an organism is there so uh, this patient had a diagnosed urinary tract infection is that what you're trying to uh, say ms purnima right right she was asking that i was using progesterone gel post transfer to uh, is it possible that uh, this may trigger her uh, infection uh might have might have so in case if it is so if if she had irritation after keeping vaginal progesterone next time it is better to change to oral supplementation and in case if required you can as i was mentioning the injectable progesterone preparation uh, mm -hmm. that can also be added on okay so uh, possibly uh, you can change uh... the medication next time so that uh, this infection right i would suggest her to consult the doctor and explain in detail uh and then decide rather than she herself deciding on it right 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 so she will be and all the planning best, yeah. to go for yeah she is planning to go for next cycle in coming months okay okay so next we have i am incidentally diagnosed to have robots uh it is robotsonian robotsonian translocation okay after evaluation of azospermia my doctor advised me pgs a part of my evaluation is pgs mandatory for me okay so um Robertsonian translocation is a condition where there is a mixing up of chromosome between 13 and 21 because of which is one of the reason for the azosperm for the azosperm azosperm is a condition where there are no sperms so uh, your doctor have advised pgs and i totally support your doctor for that the simple reason being uh, if you try with if you try ivf i mean xc uh, xc microdesa without um, pgs part there is a chance that 75% of the embryos which are formed might be abnormal and 25% chance that there is a chance 25% chance that it can be normal also so it is almost about a decision like you know whether the glass is one third filled and three fourth empty or in that kind of situation so since there is a higher chance 75 75% chance of uh, getting an abnormal embryo 
uh, it I would suggest to try the treatment as your doctor has rightly advised. Uh, the cost is a big factor and to get a good quality, um, a, the good number of sperms is also an added risk factor in, in case of Robertson uh, translocation. But if that can be tackled, I would re really recommend that. So uh, next, I have this uh, query with me. My husband is azospermic with very high FSH, 16, that is 16. But through PISA, every time we are able to get the sperm sample, those sample quality has reduced over the period of time. He otherwise is very healthy. I have no problems on female side. My question is, is it possible to get pregnant and have healthy pregnancy using azospermic sperm sample? So yes, absolutely. So what I would like to say is, uh, I understand the FSH is a little bit on the higher side and the sperm count is also falling over a period of time. Uh, so uh, only FSH is, is mentioned. I want to know about the further hormones. And uh, so in uh, in these kind of cases, there is another treatment apart from TISA and TISA called as micro TISA, which is much in the which is the latest and the most advanced form, where the chance of getting good quality uh, sperms are the chance of getting sperms itself is better. So uh, uh, since the investigation part is little incomplete, so after thorough evaluation with a good analogist, uh, there is a very high chance for getting pregnant, considering the fact that the female part is normal. Uh, she has further questions. Shall we use any other technique like TISA or uh, MTSA to get better quality sperm? That is micro TISA. Micro TISA, right. So, yes, you can use it. Should I use donor sperms? I have got pregnant thrice with azospermic sample, but all miscarried. Uh, azospermic sample with the poor quality sperms, right? So as I was mentioning, uh, I would suggest her to, um, to undergo the complete husband to undergo complete evaluation, and uh, if required. So some cases, even with the high FSH, uh, when we start medicines, we find a very good response. And as I was mentioning, with the MTSA, that is micro TSA, we we generally get a very good pregnancy rate. If in 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 a, in a scenarios like this. So it is definitely uh, possible. Possible, right. So one more. Uh, let me take this one first. Age 40, all my hormone tests and investigations are normal. I had got IVF done three years back, implantation failure, had undergone laparoscopy and hysteroscopy also in the past after IVF. I have had a history of Uvitis and later had NT, taken NTTB medicine for nine months, six years back. My husband has some motility issues. Still, we have some frozen embryos, but I am reluctant and having anxiety. Shall I go for hysteroscopy again before frozen embryo transfer as I am planning for it? Embryos were grade A. Endometrium is la normal. But embryo transfer was difficult and took long time. All my hormone tests and everything is normal. Can I go for ovulation induction? I had got it done once, but no effect. Okay. I'm really sorry for this. She's undergone a lot. Uh, well, what I understand from the question is she's, she's right now 40 years. Uh, there is a chance for getting pregnant by ovulation induction, but the chance is little lesser. Uh, I mean, if you if you ask, there we can't exactly say when she will the time to pregnancy. That is the biggest factor, which is an issue when the age gets advanced. And also with the ovulation induction, since she mentioned she has undergone a laparoscopy and hysteroscopy, and it is said to be normal. Uh, but there's mention about the tubes whether the tubes are open or not. So most of the time with the tuba, TB infection, the tubes get blocked. And in which case the ovulation induction or the natural pregnancy chance is very less. 
So uh, though it is mentioned laparoscopy is normal, uh, there is no specific mention about the tubes. So if tubes are normal, but again, understanding the 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 lesser chance she can try ovulation induction. And the second part is uh, the other question that is about the IVF. So uh, she said that all the other evaluation regarding the uterus, the genetic part, everything was normal, but she had undergone difficult embryo transfer, which could be again due to the additions, which have developed uh, additions is the scar tissue formation, which have developed as a part of infection. So, but then uh, surprisingly, her lining is good. So hmm. uh, I would suggest to her to, to undergo a hysteroscopy uh, and biopsy prior to the transfer to die to just to make sure that you know the uterine part is normal and uh, and in case sometimes if there are uh, that there are scar tissue formation around the uterine mouth which is which is not letting the transfer easy uh, that also need to be tackled prior to the next transfer because even if you even if you're having a good quality embryo if the uterus if the if the transfer is difficult that can have an impact on the pregnancy rate right so uh, she is asking that uh, uh, please advise can i conceive naturally or should i try again fresh ivf cycle or continue with frozen embryo transfer and what precautions should be taken as i had difficult embryo transfer and can i try for iui as it was not suggested for me earlier uh well, I just answered the question. That is the same thing. Uh, that is, you know, she's of advanced 40 years. So ovulation induction, she can try if her tubes are normal. Because she had this history of tubal infection, the chance is lesser. We need to we need to make look into her nodes, whether her tubes were normal or not during laparoscopy. If the tubes are normal, she can try. Usually, with the ovulation induction, one it is a very basic treatment. The general pregnancy rate of an ovulation induction is uh, 12 to 18 percentage globally. Anywhere, anywhere you do it, it this is almost standard. The reason being, uh, it is a very basic treatment where we give medicine to develop the uh, for the egg formation, and then we give injection for the for the egg to rupture. And that time we ask the uh, ask the part uh, ask the couple to have sexual contact, and then we try for a pregnancy. But then still, there are many steps which are not seen uh, in for, for us during ovulation injection. Whether the, what is the quality of the egg, whether the sperm and egg were able to meet, the quality of the sperm, what was the quality of the embryo whether the embryo was able to pass through the tube and what was the situation at the uterus, whether it was receptive. So still many, many of the steps are not seen and because of which the pregnancy rate is only 12 to 18 percentage in a normal couple, in a not a normal couple, in, an, in a woman with less than uh, uh, around 33 to 35 years. But when it comes to a woman of 40 years, if her ovarian reserve is lesser, then the chance further reduces. So if she understands the fact that the chance is lesser and if the tubes are patent, she can try. Uh, but a better if 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 uh, because of the history that she had a TB infection, I would suggest her to undergo hysteroscopy first. Okay. And the correction of the uh, difficult transfer, which is like if there is any uh, any additions at the, at the cervix that has to be removed. Okay. Okay. So. Uh better you opt for these all situations okay let me finish first from my <laughs> side uh, so uh, next we have age 34 amh 0.274 thyroid medicine 50 mg for three years i had one failed fresh three days six cell embryo transfer in august now I have three frozen embryos of day three, eight cells to be transferred all together by end of this month. I had a polyp removal also last month. How to get implantation success this time? What is amount of physical movement advisable after FET, especially stairs? Okay. Uh, sorry, Ms. Purnima, there was a little bit of uh, interruption in between. I couldn't hear your embryo tran embryo details. That is what I understand is I'm, she's 34 years, her AMH is low, and uh, right. she has done an IVF. And uh, 
uh, what were the details of the embryo transferred uh, she had one failed fresh day 3 six cell embryo transfer in august now i have three frozen embryos of day 3 eight cell to be transferred okay. together at the end of this month okay okay so uh, so she has she has good embryos frozen which is eight cell for day 3 is considered to be good if there are no other uh, fragmentation and other parameters were all normal this is considered to be good embryo so i really hope uh, the pregnancy happens and uh, the question was she had undergone a polyp removal and uh, she was asking whether any other adjuvants is, she was asking whether any other treatment is required isn't it right hmm okay so considering the fact that she had a previous failed iv failed transfer the embryo quality was considered to be moderate to good moderate embryo so uh, still i need to it is not that uh, there could be only one reason for a person there could be a, it's not like you know in book as if okay if this problem is there others all will be normal so we need to still as i was mentioning we need to still go back and check all other parameters like you know whether the uterus is fine i i, I understand that she had undergone polypectomy and then apart from that so the the other factors the hormones she said she is on thi- thyroid medication isn't it i remember right. she was telling Thi- mentioning about thyroid the thyroid medication so whether her, yeah so whether her thyroid uh, uh, the current thyroid levels are normal certain women have a tendency to form antibodies in their body as a as a as a, 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 a complication of uh, thyroid dysfunction so when they have this thyroid antibodies it can have th- three implication it itself can cause miscarriage it can cause infertility and uh, in those kind of people the the control which can be obtained with the thyroid medication is very difficult it's very difficult to get a good thyroid control so we need to check her antibodies and in case if she has any antibodies that also need to be addressed before going for the next embryo transfer then the other factors uh, the transfer details uh, 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 has to be looked into whether the previous transfer was smooth and now since she has embryos in store there is no uh, i understand that the amh was less but still to get a good pregnancy to get a positive pregnancy you just need one egg and one embryo right so dr noshin there is some network issues uh, okay can you hear me yes now it's now it's fine <laughs> okay so uh, what is the amount of physical movement advisable after fet especially stairs she is asking this there is no need for complete bed rest at all she can walk right. around there is uh, she should not do any strenuous activity she can climb stairs slowly so any kind of activity which is not causing exertion is absolutely fine in fact in fact there is actually a recent study which actually mentioned that if you walk around the blood flow everything would be good so they actually are against uh, bed rest but i wouldn't right. suggest strenuous activities so there should be normal movement and uh, please don't lie down on yes. the bed and yes. relax so uh, next we have can a high dna sperm fragmentation remain same can't it get reduced within time itself or with coenzyme q10 coenzyme q10 okay so uh, high dna fragmentation is is a test which is done for a uh, sperm to look for the integrity of the dna because uh, some of the literature have said that when the nuclear when the, when the dna integrity is not good it can lead to poor embryo and poor pregnancy rate and even miscarriages but then uh, there is this is a this is an adv- this is a technology which is actually is uh, has got a mixed reviews some of the studies actually <clears throat> say that there is no big role but if you had a previous 
uh, failed embryo transfer and your husband is found to have high DFI, uh, one of the method is to, as she rightly mentioned, is to take antioxidants and to get so it uh, to get evaluated. Evaluation means physical examination, whether there is any dilated blood vessel and to look into lifestyle factors, whether there is, a, there is any smoking history uh, and occupational history, whether some of the some uh, occupation is actually risky. I mean, has an advanced adverse effect on the sperm quality and the quantity. So all these factors need to be considered and also the husband age. So these are the parameters which actually uh, determines the sperm DFI. And uh, since, the, uh, since the evidence is kind of mixed, since, and this is a proceed, this is a antioxidant supplementation is something which is least invasive. I would suggest her to take it after consulting her doctor, after evaluating all the other parameters as I mentioned. Okay, so uh, you can ask your doctor and continue with the medication. So I think now I'll take on these queries. Okay, we have, uh, does azospermic <coughs> sperm sample form good quality embryos? Yes, very very much. Uh, as I was mentioning, like, you know, the microdesa procedure, which uh, which I was mentioning earlier, we have got around 1,000 babies, 1,200 babies by now from azospermic men. So it is definitely possible. Just that the pregnancy rate or their journey might be a little more uh, stressful and, uh, you know, you have to be committed uh, a little more than the other couple. But it is definitely possible. So don't worry, the good embryo quality, good quality embryos are possible. So next, is there any procedure to check for uterus receptiveness? Yes, there is a technique called as endometrial receptive assay. Uh, it's otherwise called as ERA test, uh, which where basically we do, we take a small sample of the lining and look for the factors the, and the genes, whether it is in sync with the embryo transfer day and all. And if it is found to be not in sync, in the next cycle, when we are trying for the embryo transfer, we transfer according to this result. If it's not sync, if it is found to be late, then we advance it. And if it is found to be in sync, then we transfer the same time. But one of the uh, one of the controversy or one of the criticism of this test is that there are only few studies which support about this. When you look into the larger literature, most of the studies are not finding a very beneficial effect. So to decide whether you need to do an era that is endometrial receptivity test or not is again a judicious decision which needs to be dependent upon your previous history and looking into your previous transfer details and all those. So one size does not fit all. I would suggest you to uh, have a detailed talk with your doctor and then decide on it. Okay. Next, in my last IVF, only three eggs were retrieved out of four follicle. No embryo was formed. Shall I go for donor or self? My AMH is 1.5 and age is 31. Reason of infertility was tubal factor. Thank you so much for putting out your query. Uh, well, um, you mentioned that three egg was retrieved from and the no embryo was formed. I wanted to know about uh, the quality of the egg, whether they were mature, mature or, and how was the egg, like the appearance of the egg. And similarly, also the husband's parameter, how was the sperm uh, count and all. So um, considering the fact that her, she's only 31 years, her AMH is in the borderline range. I don't, I, I'm actually not a very proponent of donor IVF. So uh, uh, our center has got a policy of a complete non-donor policy. Like uh, for the past 25 years, we have never done any uh, donor treatment. So all our pregnancies, which we have, is their own. I mean, I can proudly say that all the babies born in this hospital are their own. There is no donor treatment done here. 
So uh, obviously, with an AMH of 1.5 and age of 31 years, don't lose hope. Try donor, try uh, non-donor treatment again after looking into the other parameters as I was mentioned. And again, uh, if there is any correction required that need to be done, and the next stimulation cycle should not be same as this one. We must we must look into the we must retrieve your older notes and then need to change accordingly. So what I would like to say is don't jump onto the next IVF. Do a pre-evaluation properly. Get the older notes, and I need and we need to look into the older uh, the the quality of the eggs and the quality of the sperms then, and that determines what next has to be done. Right. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Noshin, uh, like uh, the previous uh, query, we have the uh, DNA sperm fragmentation. So, we have in continuation with that uh, message, one okay. more query. Should I do IVF again as I have three FET fa fail cycles, transferred five embryos, day three, eight cell with less fragmentation or no fragmentation? I conceived with IUI max after my husband was having high DFI. No smoking, no, no illness, count is good and motility is 99%. I lost baby in fifth month due to antiphospholipid antibodies. I am 40 now. Should I go for IVF again? I have high FSH and low AMH, poor responder. Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about the loss which you had. But uh, what I would like to say is that, you know, uh, please uh, don't lose your confidence. You got pregnant once at 40 years. So you there is a good chance that you will again get pregnant with good treatment. So um, as you mentioned, Ms. Purnima, can you hear me? There's a break in between. Can you hear I me? I can hear. Yes, yes. Okay. So as you were mentioned that uh, the husband's semen sample is fine, the D, just the DFI was high, and she's on antioxidant. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, just look into whether, you know, she said that not a, her husband is not a smoker, uh, and just look into whether any varicocele or any the dilatation, of the sper, di, dilatation of the vessel is there. If not, then continue with the supplementation of antioxidant. Uh, and for the wife, uh, since she has embryos available, you mentioned that she has embryos available, right? Right. Nay, okay. She don't so, have. Uh, she said, "Should I go for IVF again?" Yes. She had so, three so, she, failed activities. Right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in her case, considering she's forty years, uh, I would suggest her to go for egg pooling, where. Uh, it's a procedure where you do multiple cycles of IVF and collect as many eggs as possible and then make embryo and then the the good quality of embryo can be transferred or as I was mentioning earlier, the PGT can be done and then transfer the good quality one. Uh, and also for the, and uh, most importantly, she need to have a correction for her antiphospholipid antibodies, which is aspirin and uh, uh, heparin injections, which she need to consider for her next pregnancy. And uh, again, uh, it is mentioned that she has antiphospholipid antibodies, uh, but that does not mean that the other parameters were, will all be normal. So we need to look into the uterine factor, the other hormones, the uh, the the other immune test and all and then to correct that and then if she transfers she will definitely get pregnant. So what I suggest that uh, if you want uh, consultation with Dr. Noshin, so please let us know and we'll arrange for that. So I think the whole uh, things would be more clear. Okay, I should take uh, these one now. Right. Oh, no, we have taken this. So next we have. Okay. I have an endometrial polyp that is 7 mm. Will it be a issue while undergoing IVF treatment? So um, again, this is a very broader term. I want to know when she had this polyp, when the polyp was seen. Hello? Hello? Hello. Can you hear Hello? me? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it is mentioned that the, the polyp is of small size, but I wanted to know when it was seen. 
whether it was seen on the day two or day three of, of uh, periods, or it is seen uh, while getting prepared for embryo transfer or during her stimulation. So during stimulation, that is uh, during the IVF treatment, it is very uh, many time many women develop polyps, which is due to the which is due to the excess hormone production, which usually gets subsided in the subsequent cycle. So um, we need to know exactly when when she is having when the polyp was diagnosed, when polyp was seen, and depending upon the, uh, the the treatment has to be planned. So if the polyp is there continuing even without the stimulation cycle, I would suggest though it is a small polyp to uh, remove the polyp. The reason being um, there is a large evidence showing that the polyps can have uh, in the in the um, effect on the pregnant the implantation of the embryo if you're having many embryo if you have got many embryos during IVF procedure then you can then you have an option of trying one trial of transfer without removing the polyp and then if that does not succeed then can think about the polyp removal but in case if you're a person who got very less number of embryo then uh, it is better. Again, the decision depends upon when the polyp was seen and then if required, it need to be removed. So we have another anonymous query. A 32 year old child through natural pregnancy before eight years, secondary infertility due to tubal blockage. One IVF failure now, can tubal block be cleared by natural treatment? Unfortunately, natural treat there is no method to clear tubal block by natural treatment. You would require a procedure, uh, a laparoscopic procedure, to check whether the tubal recarolization is possible. Sorry, the tubal uh, correction is the, uh, opening is possible or not. Uh, so it all depends upon where exactly the blockage is seen, and. Uh, probably a diagno a, a therapeutic laparoscopic procedure will help you is the is the most uh, uh, nearer to the natural way of getting pregnant after laparoscopy if the tubes remain open then you can try if not you might require to do an ivf okay. uh, so next we have i am 25 year old and i had been trying from two years did follicle study it was normal husband reports are normal this month i even did hsg test doctor said there is no blockage reports are normal should i try naturally now after hsg test what is the chance of getting pregnant okay so you're 25 so um thank you so much for the question zuha uh, so what i understand that you're 25 years you've been uh trying since two years and the follicle study was done and it was found to be normal so what i i want to ask is what so you had an ovulation after um the follicular study that is one question which i wanted to ask and the hsg is found to be normal which is actually very good which increase the chance of sorry sorry for the interruption uh so that means that the tubes are open so then I have one another question which has to be considered, which, which is an important factor which determines a pregnancy chance is your husband's semen parameter. So if the husband's semen parameter is normal uh, and the tubes are patent, there is a chance that you can try. Uh, but um, two years is generally a good time to get pregnant. Uh, I would suggest you to um, uh, get the help from the doctor and uh, to have a more aggressive treatment of ovulation induction and if it's not then to uh, have an evaluation and and also to simultaneously evaluate for the other ovarian reserve markers because you said that your last childbirth was eight years back uh, ma'am can i have that question mm -hmm. again please because it is not seen now mm -hmm. okay okay she's 25 year old and been trying since mm -hmm. from two years did follicle study it was normal uh, actually, okay, I'm sorry, again, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, also, okay. her husband smokes. Is that a major reason for not conceiving? She's asking again. 
okay uh, smoking can have a impact on the dna integrity as i was mentioning earlier regarding the sperm DNA, when i was explaining about the sperm dfi fact uh, part so uh, i would really suggest him to st uh, stop smoking because apart from the reproductive uh, effect it has we all know that the smoking has got a negative part on the every, on every system of the body so definitely smoking should be stopped and and will definitely have an impact apart from that she's been so coming back to her back to her question she's 25 year old and trying since 2 years did follicular study hsg is normal so uh, again um, we need to check her ovarian reserve and we do need to check her other hormonal parameters whether everything is normal and uh, how many cycles of ovulation induction did she try that also determines uh, what next what procedure next has to be done and what is the pregnancy chance so as i was mentioning earlier the fall the e cycles of cycle of ovulation induction has generally has got a 12 to 18% pregnancy chance if all parameters are normal and this can be further increased to 50% in 3 to 4 cycles but then you might ask so if 3 to 4 cycles and if 50% uh, increase in chance is there then why don't we do 6 to 7 cycle and make it 100% it unfortunately does not work usually that way as per the literature generally the pregnancy rate comes down after 3 to 4 cycles of ovulation induction the pregnancy uh, so if the pregnancies are not happening after 3 to 4 cycles of good ovulation induction with good monitoring then i would suggest her to go for much advanced form of treatment but again as i was mentioning earlier all other parameters the hormones her ovarian reserve the husband's parameter everything need to be checked and even for the ovulation induction right that can be more helpful to her uh, so next i have i am 31 years old i had recently fa faced failed ivf on transfer of two a quality embryos that are day 3 all the tests are normal including tb pcr the lining was also triple layered and beautiful even the doctor was not able to identify the reason of failure. Now I have three B1 quality embryos and three B3 quality embryos. When should I transfer it? Should I get it transferred or not? And should I go for a fresh IVF cycle? My doctor suggested me to transfer those grade B1 and B3 day three embryos after conversion into blastocyst so should i go for day three embryos transfer or first get it converted in blastocyst so how many day three embryos there three 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 day three embryos there right hmm. grade b right. so uh, grade b. so she had so she <coughs> had a failed ivf and there are three grade three uh, grade, uh, grade B embryos. Yes. Okay. Yes. She can culture it to day five and then look whether the blastocyst formation is there and to transfer the best ones. Right. Because that way uh, she'll have better option and like uh, failure chances would be less. Yeah. Yeah. So next we have what but solution? Again, prior to the next, hmm. so, sorry to interrupt. Again, prior to the next transfer, look uh, look mm -hmm. into the other parameters which also needs correction, and uh, and then go ahead for the transfer. Right. So as you must be hearing our session, so please note down these things and uh, go for other prior conditions, go for other tests to check what you can do. And you can always contact us so that we can connect you with the Dr. Noshin to get things more clearer. Next, we have what solution of white discharge? Um, okay. So, <laughs> I want to tell you, uh, Bhavani, white discharge, uh, if it is not foul smelling, if it is not itchy, it is very normal. It is, uh, it is actually seen in a reproductive age, all reproductive age group women, 
uh, as a part of hormonal change during the menstruation after menstruation and all this is to this is a this is a, something which is seen in all women we need to be only worried if the uh, discharge is foul smelling or itchy or you find you develop some your infection as i was mentioning earlier then only we need to be bothered of it otherwise it is very no normal and it is required so after one hour of session we require this thank you so much doctor thank you thank you <laughs> so, it's my pleasure we have lot more queries uh doctor is there any medicine to increase my egg number okay well um i i hope i wish the answer was very simple the market is actually flooded with umpteen number of uh, umpteen types of medicines to uh, you know uh, increase egg number and quality but unfortunately none of them gives a miraculous magic response so what we can try is give a set of antioxidants like coenzyme q um uh, leucin uh, and then folic acid vitamins vitamin c and then vitamin d because all these are the vitamins which have got a very important role in reproduction uh, which should take care of it along with this you can try yoga meditation and all to make it make your ivf process little stress free right and uh, what we always uh, say to our uh, members that is yes, good diet good healthy lifestyle will help you yes. okay so when we mentioned about the diet i just wanted to uh, make sure that you know it is not just for the fertility even for our well being a well balanced uh highly nutritious like uh, the uh, nuts walnuts um cruciferous vegetables like cabbage broccoli uh and in including um egg all these actually help into you know uh, generally will give a better response so if at all you're having a bad lifestyle please try to change it that also will def ha definitely have a big role in uh, the quality and the quantity of the egg right so next we have husband age 34 my age 30 we have male factor in fertility and via icsi we got only one day three embryo got 12 eggs but egg quality was poor and immature ivf transfer failed what should we do next my amh is 2.1 i'm so sorry to hear about this minakshi so uh, i understand that your amh is normal in the normal range and you got a uh, good a good number of eggs but they were immature so we have a treatment strategy here which is a diff completely different kind of a protocol and what uh, which is and it is actually a study which is getting published uh, and as per the as per our study internal data evaluation we found that the the, the protocol which we try for the immature eggs has really improved the uh, the chance of getting good quality m egg that is a mature egg in almost all the patients like it's more the, the the chance of getting mature eggs is more than 90 percentage 95 percentage in in fact if it's immature if if immaturity is a problem and the pregnancy rate is almost normal with, with that of a normal couple uh, undergoing ivf so um, i definitely would like to say that there is good hope and it is something which can be corrected easily right and again she is saying that her hsg and she normal. mentioned that the has well with regard to ivf uh, the the tubal fact that the tubal parameters are not that very important because uh, in ivf we take the eggs and then we make the embryo and we transfer it to the uterus but tubal infection is dangerous that need to be evaluated but otherwise tubes patent or not patent does not make a big decision make uh, decision in uh, the process what she need is a different protocol mainly right because uh, i think male factor in fertility is there so that also need to be corrected yes right 
we have one more query with us three cycles are done every time good follicle and endometrial lining of 10 to 12 mm was found took hsg injection during the cycle but no progress okay the we had earlier had query from this member also uh, okay so three cycles done good follicle so i assume that this was ovulation induction and the lining was good mm. and the follicle development was good and she had taken injection for the follicle for the egg to get ruptured from the follicle mm. that's what i assume right. but no progress means the ovulation did not happen or the pregnancy did not happen i'm not very clear but i assume that the pregnancy the ovulation happened and the pregnancy did not uh, happen ovulation has happened and the pregnancy did not uh, happen uh, the right. same person has a second question also right this is the first question she asked and uh, so in okay, continuation the, the tubal evaluation is normal right 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 so uh, as i was mentioning a per cycle ovulation induction pregnancy rate is very less if if the ovulation induction process went on smoothly releasing egg and the endometrium was good and the sperm count was normal the chance of pregnancy is only 12 to 18 percentage how we can improve is by doing a, 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 the same treatment in 3 to 4 cycle and to increase the number of uh, follicle developing so suppose if in the first cycle you have just taken medication and only one follicle have developed i would suggest to try um, uh, with your doctor try a different technique of adding some injection so that two uh, I mean more than one follicle level up two or three follicles develop which will increase the pregnancy chance uh, as you have rightly done the tubal test which is patent which is actually good so i think in the next um, one or two cycles the pregnancy should happen with uh, with the help of advanced medicines in case if it was not taken earlier and uh, if you want any uh, further consultation with dr noshin so please uh, let us know and here uh, i would like to add few things about our platform that uh, you can join uh, our community and uh, please be feel safe to join our whatsapp group as we have closed group for women and if you have any remaining queries please let us know we have small programs for which we uh, like we have programs for your holistic approach for uh, this we are here to help you contact us and yes we have last query with us so husband age is 33 my age is 32 having cyst problem operated three times suggested ivf with donor egg can be successful amh is low okay so when she mentioned cyst i assume it is endometriotic cyst uh, and she had she got operated thrice which has really uh, had an impact on her amh uh, whether the pregnancy will be successful there is a high chance uh, well what is her amh level it's not mentioned but uh, with the what i would like with the as i was mentioning earlier miss Uh, ma'am, can you hear me, Purnima? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So. Yes, ma'am. Were you able to hear me other uh, yes. all this while? Yes, yes. So. Yes. Yeah. So what I was mentioning is about. Uh, yeah, she mentioned that her AMH is low, uh, but yes. the value is not there. Um, she had undergone surgery twice for the endometriotic cyst. That's what I assume when she mentioned by cyst. so uh, which has actually had an impact on her amh and uh, she mentioned about the need for donor uh, ivf she can try donor ivf there is nothing wrong but i would like to suggest sorry it stuck again right right okay now it's fine yes dr noshin please continue continue dr noshin dr noshin please continue could you hear me miss purnima i i can't hear you 
ओके बट आई कैन हियर यू डॉक्टर नौशीन आई कैन हियर यू I can hear you. Okay, I think there's some network issue with the doctor, and uh, we have uh, almost answered all queries. So the last query, we don't know about the exact AMH level. So what Doctor Noshin was suggesting that yes, you can opt for donor cycle also. but uh, if uh, we know your amh level then it will be better for dr noshin to suggest and we left with uh, one more query and uh, uh, please you can message uh, your query on our whatsapp number and we'll try to solve it for you and uh, if any other query is left with you please let us know we'll pass on the query with dr noshin and we'll solve it and uh, i think there's some major network issues uh, on dr noshin side otherwise she could have uh, joined again okay we have this amh value is 1.3 so uh, i'll just pass on your query to dr noshin as uh, there's some network issues and uh, uh, i'll just check on Okay, I think uh, we'll just wrap up the session. If anything left, please let us know, and uh, I'll just uh, we'll just try to solve your queries. And thank you, thank you, Dr. Nasheen, so much for joining us, and thank you, viewers. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye bye.